This is the matchup that, you know, I didn't have the most trouble picking, honestly, but this is the one that I'm probably most excited for. This is undoubtedly. I'm my, just like, oh, God, I can't wait until this match. This is my favorite match of the entire night, by far, bar none. The game that we saw between True and Fantasy really comes to mind. Awesome, awesome games and uh, that we've seen from True. And he just will not go hype. He will not go beyond Ling Mi to Baneling. And he will make more Banelings than almost any other Zerg. He makes more Banelings than 2011 Locera. He will make over oh, wow. 100 Banelings. He will have more Banelings on the map than you have Marines. And that could be a very big problem, unless you are the king of Marines, the king of Marine splits versus Banelings. Marine King and here. You know, Marine King, he's had some tendencies to, to show us some Marine tank play as well. And I feel like if True goes for that kind of style, he's, he has to add tanks. Like, please add tanks. Um, but we've seen it before. Enough Banelings will also push through tanks. We're going to have to see exactly how he deals with this. Yeah, that is uh, what we will, in fact, see. Now, what's the most awesome about this to me, Brendan? Beyond, beyond everything else, like, well, the Sage has been set. And the stage that the stage has been set on, the map, is Yonsu. A two-player map where all strategies are viable. Marine pushes like we've seen Marine King defeat Roro with just recently. You know, the types of, of pushes we've seen with Mech on this map out of players like Reality. This is a really cool map, a dynamic map. And we are split on this. And even our MC refused to comment. <laughs> he refused to comment. He's a coward, actually, he, in some know, ways. But <laughs> there, in, for the uh, Pure Creator game, I'm like, I actually cannot choose. I thought I was going to just like have so much trouble and just have to flip a coin or something. But the caster actually was so confused, had no choice. He just wanted to he abstained, man. give up his vote. All right, let's go into this. The most exciting match of the night, the King of Banelings versus the King of Marines here at the SPL. SK Telecom. Up here in the top right, in the green for Jin Air Green, he's the Zerg player. True. To the bottom left, in purple, the King of Marines. He's returned. His name is Marine King. Well, his name is actually Jung Hoon, but his <laughs> ID is Marine King. Uh, now, this map, we talked about it a little bit briefly. We've talked about this a lot in the past as well for this matchup. Mech is strong here because there's a lot of choke points. Pretty easy third base for the Terran to take. And if you're going for Mech, you want to have a fast third base as soon as possible so that you can get those six gases up, max out on that Mech as soon as possible, be sure you can throw any Zerg attacks back, and then start to control the map with your, your composition that's better. Uh, I like this, this scout out of True. He's saying, I don't want to be too barracks proxy. I don't want to make sure I know what Marine King's doing here. Doesn't want to find himself in the Nest T zone. <laughs> no. No one no one wants to be in the Nest T zone. 11 barracks here. And he's actually going to have to pull another SCV off, so that's going to cost him even further mining. So he goes 11-11, not in barracks, but in uh, uh, barracks and gas. So he's going to have a very fast Reaper here. And as this is now scouted by True, gonna have to make a decision whether he wants to go pool first or hatch first. I think he will still stick with the hatch, but uh, let's see how confident he is here. Yeah, it seems like he's gonna go hatch. He's sending out that drone right now. Throw that down. Nothing to block it here. No SCV was sent out by Marine King. Yeah, you know, he just really can't afford it with the build he's going for. He just loses too much mining as it is. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people will argue, though, that you make up for it slightly because you get the faster orbital, which then gives you the faster mule, so it's a little bit of a trade-off there. We actually saw a lot of debates in the very beginning of Wings of Liberty beta about barracks timings about this. You know, people were even making barracks before Depot, arguing that getting the faster orbital um, in that case was better. It was yeah. proven to be not true. It was proven to be false. That's but, when uh, people start getting out the calculators. They get the spreadsheets, and they do all the math, and they're like, no, actually, it's 0.35 seconds faster if you do it this way. And everybody's you know, like, oh, okay, yes, yes. I think the only debate that really exists, build order-wise, opening-wise, still in StarCraft II, is, is whether or not the extractor trick is viable or if the 9 Overlord is the best. As far as I know, it's been calculated down mathematically to that the nine overlord is slightly better in almost all cases but still we see players like life uh no matter what 
to the extractor trick. Very interesting. You know, players who have just done it all their life, all their programming life, I should say, they just won't go away from it, even if it's been proven mathematically or, you know, maybe he just hasn't heard about the math or something. Yeah. Well, now here comes this Reaper in here. Let's see how much damage he can get done. It's a very fast Reaper and nice micro there by True. Now we're going to have to rely upon Zerglings. He's actually chasing down that drone. Drone oh. hides on the extractor. Gets away into the extractor and this Reaper is going to be chased out, it seems. Zergling is coming back to defend in case the Reaper wants to come back. Reaper, decent micro here. Zerglings don't want to get off creep. They will be slower. Yep. Is he going to get that? I don't think so. Oh. Micro's wow. it away again. True. Very nice micro here. But here's the second Reaper. Yeah, this is the big problem here. Uh, and this is why this build is so solid. He gets one. And how many will he get here? Actually, I think he got a second. Yep. He got a second one. Zerglings are on the chase again. But with two, you can micro even better. And he could just let them regen again. Back yeah. at home, he has a CC going down. Decides to build it on the low ground. Now, with these two Reapers, he can actually fight a Queen without Zergling support, especially if the Queen goes off creep. He needs to pull that back, though. Nicely done. And now he's going to swap them in just a second. OK, well, he decides to go away because they're both pretty low. And the second Queen on the high ground is also very scary. Now, he's committed to a third Reaper here. This is very Gumiho-esque. Uh, no targeting here on this Queen on the weakened Reapers. He's actually going to lose this Queen. No yep. doubt about it. Queen's oh, and the drones down. as well. Oh, no. Drones just spawn. A spore crawler goes down. Saves one of them, but one does go down. And look at this. He can just come over here again. Zerglings try to push them away. This is such a great game already, Brendan. 324 resources lost for True in the cancels that he's had to do, in, in the drones he's lost, the Zerglings as well, the, plus that Queen. And, uh-oh, double blue flame Hellion follow-up. This is... I like this a lot. He's already killed one queen. He's forced a lot of Zerglings. The Hellions with the blue flame are going to be so, so good against those Zerglings that he's forced. A lot of Larva is down. True's going to be behind in the economy. He's going to start doing even more damage. Yeah. Uh, I, I really like that you mentioned that. All those Zerglings are, are lost. Larva, the work count is dead even here. And as a Terran, that's excellent for you because then you also get mules. Uh, the Zerg player is supposed to be ahead of, and Harvester's taking account, uh, taking away the mules. Uh, you start adding those in, it's it's a really, really bad place to be right now for True. Um, and losing that Queen is very expensive as well. So he sees this tech lab, uh, but he does not see a starport being made. So he's probably getting a little bit confused right now. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what he's, what he's thinking about here. The question is, is he going to assume this is coming? He saw the factory with the one reactor on. Here's another factory with the tech lab, of course, coming up. There's no way for him to scout this without overlord speed, something he's not going to be able to invest resources in right now. So this blue flame coming down right away. It's going to be. Oh, sorry. It was just gonna uh, say, I was just going to say the Korean caster seemed a little surprised by that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, this is going to be the Marauder variation. So it's even scarier. <laughs> It just doesn't look like there's much back here for True. This is like, those are the Zerglings he had from before, and that's pretty much all the defense he has. He's going to come over to the third base, see this. Yeah, this base might actually just, I mean, what is he going to do to defend it? Those Zerglings alone? LOL, no. <laughs> Sorry. LOL, no, that's for sure. That's why a lot of the time you see players take the third base below the, the main. It's further away, you know, but if you count the rocks, not really. And look and he, at this. He I just mean, has like enough Hellions here, you can just kill this. Yeah, this Drew is, is enough. He's going to get the surround, but you know, these units are so fast, he's going to go away, not get the surround. And True's making a bunch more Zerglings, more and more Zerglings being forced. Blue Flame is not quite done yet. That Queen almost goes down. Once Pre Igniter is ready, he's going to have a field day here. But if it does not finish, maybe, just maybe, he can hurt this push in its tracks. Remember, Marine King has a lot of Hellions at home, he's hidden. So this is not his entire Hellion force. So losing a few Hellions here, yes, it does hurt him. Uh, but the follow-up push with the Marauders is going to still be quite strong. He's getting plus one. I wonder if he's actually going to wait for that. If he does, it's going to be like the biggest shocker ever. Yeah, I mean, he's already done so much damage. He got Blue Flame finished now. It seems like he's going to move out with the Hellions, it seems, and those Reapers to go towards that third base for now. And he also has plus one and two Armories on the way just for later in case. Like, Marine King is thinking so far ahead with this as well, with the double armories going up. This queen will go down. Not that significant comparative uh, to losing this hatchery if he does, in fact, lose this. There's still no Roach Warren, and now the Blue Flame, of course, is complete. The Pre-Igniter now shown, and Larva is even being toasted here. The counterattack is a desperate measure by True right now, because I, I don't see him breaking through. And, I mean, there's more Hellions at home, right? So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's definitely a desperation move. He's trying to get a Spire and a Roach Warren up here. 
Um, if he does get a spire up, oh no, it's uh, Marine King gets his fan. He knows the spire is coming, so he's going to be prepared for that as he well. He can make Thor's at home with yeah. those armories he has. Uh, I mean, look at this wall. This is like so much resources spent. Is it a fourth Evo Chamber? No, that's the Roach Warren. Well, that's a good choice. He's definitely going to need that. Scan goes down here. He's eliminated all the creep. Marine King identifies, of course, there's still no third base, and he's just like laughing at this point. Like, he's already got the game won. Look at his face. You can see it in the camera shot just to the bottom right there. He's, he's like chewing his gum. He's like sitting back in his chair. He's all like, oh, I got this game totally. These are going to trying to come back here and uh, surround something. They may get this tank. No, it's deciding like, not to. If he gets a tank, he loses all of his Zerglings probably. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just not a good place to be. Uh, Ten Mutalists will pop out here. There's a Thor on the way. It's a little bit delayed. But I don't think that the Mutalists are going to change this game. In fact, if Marine King 1-8 across the map, the Mutalists might barely stop him from killing the natural. So this is a, a funky build. He's going now into Marine production, and he's just going to try to end the game with the timing here. It's like this this game he's always thought one step ahead of his timings. It's like he's he's like, like you know planning his engagement at the same time as he's planning which retirement home he's going to live in when he's older. Like that's how he's played this game. Now this group of mutas without any Thors to actually support are going to pick off some of these expensive units trying to get the siege tanks here going for SCVs as well. Trying to hide around that missile turret and there's the Thor is going to force it back for now. Picking off a decent amount of units, but like we said, I mean, still on two base, he's trying to get that third base up desperately. Oh, this is not, this is not good for Marines from losing these SVs, but I don't, I don't think he's too concerned because he's making five Marines at a time. Stim is obviously very much delayed, and without Stim, Mutus can have a really fun time fighting small groups of Marines. Those he uses Patrol Micro here actually to pick those off and then fly away. And I don't know, man. This is actually starting to do a lot more damage than I think it should have. Yeah, look at those supply depots with the supply drops on them as well. Could possibly go for those. Decides not to. Wants to come back to this third base before any turrets are up. You know, uh, that what we see on the production tab, a Baneling Nest, very dangerous in the hands of True. But uh, still not all too useful just yet. Now, if he kills that, that depot, there's two of them there that you talked about. Oh, 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 oh. oh. One, oh, it doesn't get the second shot. But if he killed those depots, that would have been so much supply, possible loss, and all oh, good kiting here. Not even all the Zerlings participating in the fight. They don't have any upgrades just yet. They're getting closer. Well, this base is barely mining. He's now at, you know, he's up in harvesters by just a few. Uh, one harvester up now at this point in time. And Stim is about to finish. I think this is going to be the nail that's put in the coffin with, like, Thor's hammer, man. He is going to shut this hard. Yeah, it seems like True doesn't want to engage his head on, and a smart idea in that. He's going to go for the counterattack here. There's not much here back for Marine King. Ooh. He doesn't have that many uh, turrets up as well, and now with Zerglings in the base, he's going to be able to focus down some turrets and get those Mutas to start doing a lot of damage. Yeah, even going for the Thor here, and no Hellbat support. A bit of, bit of an oversight to actually allow those Zerglings to get into the main base. Should have lifted the depots. And this actually pulls uh, Marine King back. The Thor is in a pretty tight spot over here to deal with the Zerlings. It's eventually going to clean all of those up. And there's a lot of turret coverage here. But True lives to fight another day. Yeah, True's done a, a very decent job of getting back in this game. He has his Banely Nest up, he has Banely Speed on the way. I'm just concerned for his, you know, his drone count is decently low. He lost a bunch before. He's, his third base isn't really mining, if you guys look over there. Banely Speed versus this many Hellions and Hellbats to tank them before the Thors and the rest of the Marines split against them. It's it's like, well, if he doesn't make those, what's he going to make? And Festers, sorry, that's a bit too expensive right now. Uh, it's like no matter what he wants to build against this composition, Marine King is already checkmated. In. Yeah, I'd love to see Marine King just make a few more missile turrets at home and then just go for the kill. This is true, man. Those are all the green banelings you guys see matching with this green color, but uh, is it going to be enough? That's the question. Marine King decides to take out the third base and come back. Yeah, he keeps scanning. I think he's just going to kill the, the fourth base as well now. Is that even completed? No, he's going to want to cancel that if he can. Nice pick off here on the Thor. Oh, well, maybe the Hellbats can actually save it. At least make it a bad trade. It's still worth it, I would say, but I mean, it, these little things are not going to be enough. He needs like one huge thing. Like he needs Marine King to accidentally move command into his army or something. Uh, this counterattack will eventually be shut down, even brings most of his army back home. The Hellions will clean up the last of the Zerlings. And Marine King, well, I think that, that uh, nail in the coffin we were talking about, it's about time to put it in. 
You gotta hammer it down, man. You just gotta hammer it in. That is so many Bane links. True sticking to his style here. Oh, those drones are going to the wrong place at the wrong time, Brendan. And even these Mutas can't fight these Marines head up. The Marines have plus two attack. Yep, with plus three on the way. And not many upgrades here for True. Yeah, he's at 1-1 one, one, if I'm not mistaken. He can't afford anything else, especially with all the Bane he made. This is going to do it. Marine King's army is 137 supply to 59. His Baneling counterattack is funny, but I that's like about it. it. It's funny. It's definitely funny. <laughs> it's, it's comical in nature, but it will not change the outcome. Yeah, Marine King is finally putting in that hammer we talked about. We're going to push in here at the second base now. And, I uh, mean, the thing is, True is probably doing this because he knows he's famous for his Banelings. Yeah. And he's just going to give a good show before he loses it. But guess what, Prime fans? Your king has taken another win here at SPL. And he will put his team into a 2-1 lead, he and Creator. Thing is, yeah, he's got these Mutas in here, but with another Thor popping out and all these Marines... Well, well more, more Banelings come in as well, but... We have a Thor here now as well. Yeah, these two Banelings should be able to clean it up. GG. Marine King does it again. Taking out another pretty decent Zerg player here with uh, some very aggressive straight up timings. His Reapers did a lot of damage. He got ahead early on by killing that Queen. And then after that, just started to snowball with his push, which was well hidden. And True decided to take the third base to the left without really killing the rocks. And when you're up against that much Hellion pressure with Reaper support, which he knew about, he knew there were three Reapers, you're going to have a big problem. So Yeah. And then later on, he didn't really scout the blue flame coming. And then when there were enough Hellions, he started to do a lot of damage.